so I'll be brief. Um, I was I'm binging. I just discovered it's a Gundam. Been binging on stuff. Even emailed them. Emailed them saying, "Hey, I notice you have advertisers on your thing. Would you like me to be an advertiser? In which case, I would give you money." I doth said to him, and he thus spoke to me nothing. He hasn't responded yet. I'm like, I guess you don't want it. All right. <laughs> There's, I'm so close. There's like these big, you know, I'm knocking on heaven's door. I'm getting up there. Almost at 100,000. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, <clears throat> it's not to get to 100,000. It's just I want to make money so I, I don't have to work a real job, which we're going to get to later. And it's just like, ah, I'm, I'm almost right there. I'm almost right there. Like, hey, I'm willing to pay you. This would be mutually beneficial. It would be cost beneficial. Nothing. They never get back to me. But anyway, so I was listening to him. And um, a lot of his uh, um, routine is uh, he'll go and do response videos to just nightmares on TikTok and other videos. And I know that you're looking into the abyss and that's not a, a true uh, cut segment of society. But. What kind of scared me a little bit uh, on the 20th or 30th video that he was uh, doing response video to, there's a group of people out there. And I know that podcasting and content creation, internet influencer, I know it's new. I know it's the hot thing. But I got I to gotta tell everybody right now, all of you, all of you listening, uh, you're all taking yourself way too seriously. This is not a real job. It's not. See, and, I, and I've admitted that the entire time. I just happen to be the right guy at the right place with the right message. But most of it has been luck. I mean, it's, just, well, it's like, okay, I have some, some knowledge. <clears throat> I got bored. That's how most of the people go. Oh, I'm bored. I'm going to try this internet podcasting thing. But I don't know if we're like the first generation to kind of come through, starting with the old days of blogging and all that. We kind of got grandfathered or ingratiated in. But there's this generation of podcast internet influencer type of people, and they think it's serious. They think that just because they put like a, a camera and a microphone and they get a studio, they think it's some kind of real job. But if anybody ever questions them, they, they, they think it's like they're questioning a surgeon or the veracity of a, of a profession akin to, I don't know, being a CPA or a, a mechanic. And, they, and uh, you could you could pick on me all day long, say it's not a real job. Look at you, you pathetic, sad man, getting your super chats like a dirty stripper whore on the stripper pole on the stripper stage. You know, and you're like, and I'm like, yep, yep, you're right. I'm I'm as confused as you are. I my my family, a lot of people, my dad especially. How the hell it happened? I'm I'm as confused as you are, Dad. I have no clue. No, I, I'm going to keep doing it. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Do you see how much money they're throwing at me on the stripper stage? You're darn right. But not once did I say, I'm a serious, I'm a broadcast professional. I'm serious. But this guy, I don't know if it's second generation or what, but there's some people out there. And they even did a poll. We asked young Americans. And it's young Americans, Chinese, and the UK, what do you want to be? And I, I know they're asking younger kids. Uh, they're like, do you want to be an astronaut? Do you want to be a firefighter? What do you want to be, little Jimmy? You want to be a policeman? I don't want to be podcasters and a YouTube influencer type of people. Meanwhile, the Chinese, they want to be an astronaut. And I don't know why they surveyed the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom, they I think they said, well, what? I, they only had like teacher, musician, some astronaut. I'm like, why are you asking people in the UK if they want to be an astronaut? They don't have a space program. They're not us. They're not even the Chinese. What are you asking them for? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> it's like asking me if I want to be an NBA basketball player. You can't. Any kingdom's not going to put anything in space. <laughs> and my goodness, our MGs are out of crop. And we sold Range Rover to a foreign investor. <laughs> yes. We'll have some crappy food. My goodness. <clears throat> anyway, uh, but just I just wanted to be out there that being a content creator, being an internet influencer, yeah, it's real money. Yeah, and that sense technically is a real job. But let's be very serious. Let's be very honest with ourselves. You people, you're it's not a real job. 
I'm not saying you can't be proud of it, <clears throat> but you should be too proud of it. Like someone comes up to you like, oh, did you wake up in your pajamas? You, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, but they were taking umbrage. They're getting pissed off. They actually think it's a real thing. And I kind of, not that I want this to happen, but there was the adpocalypse. I wasn't around for that. I, I was slow to the to the YouTube thing. But there were people, like not once in Cappy's personal financial management, not once have I ever assumed the the slightly now more than beer money I'm making on the YouTubes and the super chats and the the um, advertising. Not once did I ever bank on having that money. Let alone to the point <clears throat> I'd go sign a thirty year mortgage for it on multiple houses and cars. And there are people who did that. And then the apocalypse came. And then I don't know the the revenues were cut by eighty percent. Now they couldn't afford it. So and it's maybe maybe I'm just a little bit older to know like good things like this tend not to last. If it's too good to be true, it probably isn't. And if it is true, it won't remain true for very long. <clears throat> and so I I would just advise those of you out there. You know, you're making some money on the internet. You do, you're a content creator. Yeah. Oh, heaven help you if you're a life coach whose life is miserable and utter fail. Like if you're, if you're, if your expertise of being a life coach is making money on the internet and that's it, we can't all be internet people. You know, you just got to be yourself. If, if you're just rehacking the same stuff and that's your success, like, you make your money doing courses on trading stock options. You don't trade stock options because you suck at it, but you teach a course on it. That kind of thing. Life coaches who are horrible. Their lives are horrible. They're fine. I want to do a financial audit of all the life coaches. That's what I want to do. <clears throat> all the mental health professionals. I want to see. I want to see your medical background. I want to see your psychological evals. And, and I know people personally who like they're going to be business bosses and coaches and they're Internet influencers. And, da, da, da. and I know them and they're drug addicts and piss poor and their lives are nightmares. Not every influencer is like that, of course. But, hey, this this is fun. We lucked out, huh? This this is a great time to be alive, right? But don't don't act like that. You're serious. Don't act like this is a real thing. Now. <clears throat> It well, right? These guys right here. You could certainly make it serious, no doubt about it. There's some serious heart. You know, you take um, even though I I pick on them, Russell Brand, uh, Fresh and Fit, uh, some of this. You know, your your major multi million league, the equipment, the audio visual editing. I mean, you're putting on a real show. All right, you you you're putting on. You gotta get the studio quality. Fresh and fit, got to worry about security and legal stuff, all this, all this stuff that goes into, but you don't see what goes into that show. <clears throat> there, I, I'd almost say, all right, you're starting to get pro now, but there, 80% of your work is entrepreneurial and running an actual business. The podcasting part or the internet influencing part, that, that's almost, that's the finished product. That's almost secondary. But for the rank and file of you guys out there, and you're making your money, you're having a good time, for the love of God. Hang your hat on something that's an actual real accomplishment and not dumb blind luck. Don't don't ever like when people ask, what do you do? Well, I'm an author and, a, and an analyst and an economist. Those, those are right. I just as well could say a security guard, though. I haven't worked security in quite some time because that was a real job. I have a, I have a little bit of a problem. I'm an Internet influencer. <laughs> I'm a content creator. I am, but it's not what I lead with. <clears throat> and then you high knockers, especially Dre out there, like a uh, life coach. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nigel, who certifies the life coach? You, do you know how many losers just declare themselves? I'm going to help people with their lives. Your life is an absolute mess of a nightmare. What are you, what, what are you kidding me? You're like some fat lady saying you're going to teach people about health. What, what's wrong with you? Like, I think that that is the industry where I know bakers are scum. I know finance dude bros are scum. I know politicians are scum. 
holy cow, I would honestly trust uh, Mexican cartel members before I trust people who are a life coach. The percentage of life coaches, like self-declared ones, that they oh, I'm a life coach, that are actually giving you any good advice and have their own act in life ticket. Wasn't there one that killed himself? Hang on, I'm not kidding. <clears throat> life coach. It, it may be more than one. Uh, life coach radio host commits suicide together. <laughs> Two life coaches, hosts of the Pursuit of Happiness radio show. <laughs> 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 oh my god guys you, you see how fake it is you see how fake it is it's all a show here with look let me let me tell you how it's a little sincere let me let me draw two parallels uh, yeah that won't be a perfectly good game. when you tune in what do you see you see a pissed off angry gen x guy who complains about everything right you know it's real you know it's legit like when I tell you, but half the advice I give is mistakes I made. I'm like I screwed that up. Don't do that. And everybody, oh no, I got that. Oh, I'm like, no, life sucks. And if and if what you hear, if what you hear sounds good, it's a lie. <laughs> and then these people live a lie. I don't know something else. So that's 2013. John Gedard is second coach with ties to Larry Nasser, the coach. Oh, gymnastics coach. That's not. No, I don't want. <clears throat> hang on. I got to put. I got to put quotations around life. Co uh, life coach. Life coach. I I type kills himself. Maybe it's not. What if I put uh, kills herself? <clears throat> Here's another one. Coaches training dot blog dot com. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You got to get training in this. Who came up with this? Uh, not only did one life coach die by their own hand, two met their makers by suicide in the same fateful movement. Two life coaches. So this is all oh, the links are no longer. Lynn Rosen and John Liddick were life coaches who owned Why Not Now? Why Not Now? A life coach consulting company. <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys, if I end myself, it's going to be because of some serious, like a, a, a terminal painful disease. I'm just completely bored. I'm like, I'm out of it. I don't think I'll ever get to that point. I'll go travel the world or something like that. <clears throat> it, it's not going to be like, hey, zippity doo zippity day, my oh my, if it's a wonderful day, next day, where's Aaron? Oh, well, funny thing. Check out the Rapid City Tribune. A life coach consulting company, a uh, radio show, Pursuit of Happiness. Oh, 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 man. Look at these. I don't believe ugly people are ever happy. No. Holy cow. <clears throat> the Pursuit of Happiness. Unfortunately, too, it appears as if happiness was pursued but not found. John Littig, 48, and his common-law wife, Lynn Rosen, 46, were found by the manager of a Brooklyn apartment building, sitting on a couch, hands together with plastic bags over their heads and tubes attached to a canister of helium. Suicide notes. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. <clears throat> I can't take it in a more motivational speaker. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh Bigger picture. See, aren't life coaches role models? The official blog of Master Coach University. Master Coach University. Hang on. I, I'm game, guys. <laughs> Welcome to coachtraining.blog.com, a blog that helps new coaches who are confused about getting clients. Oh, making enough money. I wonder how many people are like poor. And that's the that's the their their depression. Dude, at least I got you guys covered on that, right? <clears throat> right. My solution: work two jobs, don't go to college for stupid stuff. Do any of these sound like easy solutions? No, they're very hard solutions. Uh, first free coaching blueprint video toolkit. If you want to get over a thousand dollars worth of video training for free, then check out the Coach Blueprint Video Toolkit. Oh my God! Oh, is this the the road to becoming a master certified coach? 
master certified, not regular certified, master certified. This reminds me of this gal who wouldn't have sex with me. Um, she had the hot for me. We wouldn't have sex. There was the, there was the, I'm done having fun and I'm time to settle. It gets serious. No more games, which means no more sex for Cappy. She had huge cans, huge cans. I just want to go ba-doom, 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 ba-doom with those. <clears throat> and there was no ba-dooming. And um, she, she wanted, she knew I taught dance class. You know how I taught dance class? I went to the dance places. They have a five, well, more than that, a 15, 30 minute dance lesson. We learned the basics. And then I practiced dancing and I taught myself the moves and I learned from other people <clears throat> like a big sparring gym, except it was for dance. And I put together some proposals, sent them out to different community ed programs and community centers and the like, like that. And then I taught dance 14 years. She wanted to teach Pilates. I'm like, well, I got all the contacts. Why don't you put together Pilates classes? Oh, no, I can't do that. I'm like, pretty sure you can. Pretty sure you can. Oh, no, I can't do that. Well, why not? Well, I'm not certified. I'm like, I, I don't I don't think this is more community. You don't need a doctorate. You just, just teach a good class. No, no. So she spent, I, God, now this is all coming back to me. I think she spent over a year taking various certifications, by which time someone else who was a slightly had slightly more entrepreneurial acumen went in there and beat her to the punch. <clears throat> and, and even then, after all this certification and training, da, 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 she didn't teach. It's like, go, go do it. He, and, and for God's sake, don't listen to anyone who calls himself a life coach, okay? Like, like, I don't even, I won't even go so far as a mentor. I'm a mentor. The people who you want to mentor you are too busy with their own crap to like, oh yeah, I'm going to spend my time helping people out. Or I'm going to be a coach. No, no. I guarantee you, we take the average net worth of all the life coaches. It's negative. They're bankrupt. They're insolvent. Their credit score. I guarantee you the average credit score of a life coach has got to be below 500. <clears throat> you know, Chris Farley's interpretation of the life coach living in the van down by the river, not joking, not, not far from the truth, not far from the truth. And all the content internet influencers, you're not, you're not much better. You're not much better. I mean, my God, those of you like, Oh, finally I got a, a job and you go buy Lord knows what materialism you guys buy to fill that empty hole. But anyway, larger point, this, this is not, this is not a, uh, this is not a real job. I admit it's not a real job. Never have admitted it's a real job. It's a hobby. It's a fun thing I did. I got lucky. Thank you, everybody, very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll be here as long as the lights are on. And <clears throat> Man, wouldn't it be great if Elon Musk bought out YouTube or Google? That'd be real nice. Uh, but for those of you younger people, all right, where you dream, I want to be an internet influencer. I might say don't do it. Yeah, go do it, but do it on the side. Have a day job. And if you ever become successful, don't become one of these over-serious morons who think that this is somehow a real profession, or that we had to work hard to get here. All right? Is work sort of involved? Yeah. You know, I had to get this blue rubber band. I, I mean, there's a lot of work going in. Some, one of these days when I get time, I'll straighten out that blue rubber band. Do you know how long it to put to, to take the garter and put it up there? Tighten down the, the, the arm crane for the a lot of work went into it. But no, this is, this is not working fast food. This is not being a cop. This isn't being an over, overnight trucker. This is not being a soldier. This is this is not even I don't even know what this is. This is one of the easiest gigs ever. And and uh just uh, don't don't think that it's real. Don't be don't take it too seriously and get insulted when people mock and ridicule you. So there you go. <clears throat> Paul's in the house. You guys should subscribe to the Come On Man podcast. Subscribe to Paul. Oh, we have my uh, favorite girl in St. Paul over there. Uh, we have my most hated Mexican in all of the world right here. K Pasa, Mike. Oh, I'm talking to Mike. Alan Price, two books. But Cappy, Conte creation is my passion. I know the passion. Passions don't pay money. Sometimes they do if you're lucky. 
Uh, Bob, two bucks. Who cares as long as you get paid with real money? I know, I know. I'm, I, I'm aware of that. I, I'm saying the ego investment is what I'm talking about. Like the, I, I, uh, you can watch it. Go tune into, um, it's a Gundam or watch people. Well, what's really sanctimonious is where large traditional legacy media gets involved. Like G4 TV was this thing at one time it was organic. And then I think CBS or NBC infused some money to bring it back. And they brought in just a bunch of robots, these mindless NPCs. And it was all supposed to be like political and edgy and the, the humor was horrible. <clears throat> and when they interview each other, it's like this big circle jerk. And they're all like, oh, it's so serious. And it's like, no, you got a studio. I guess like a lot of times they had paid audiences. Um, it, It's just like how – and these are people kind of my age. I'm like, how do you take yourself seriously? That's why it's so fake. You think this is serious. You think this is a performance. You think this is like Broadway or high theater or Shakespeare. And then like, okay, you got 200,000 followers or whatever. All right. You can't milk that for some money like a little bit. You got to. What the amount of seriousness and professionalism or lack of professionalism, how they try to be professionals at something that should just be a hobby or a game. That's where I'm like, okay, you're taking yourself way too serious with, with this, way too serious. And you could kind of tell they're not they're not having fun, they're not sincere about it. They're always more modernly, obviously, they're always trying to push a political motive of the left, of course. Obviously, that that is rife within the <clears throat> internet influence kind of internet commentator, content creator, community, community, community. Like a we're gonna it's like wow, can you just have fun? Can you just enjoy it? No, you gotta you gotta shove your politics up everybody's ass. I wonder why they're not tuning in. <clears throat> but you are right, Bob. As long as you're getting paid with real right, yeah. I mean, when's the last time I worked a real job? I'm trying to think. The last security shift I worked was quite some time. I guess all the labor I did put in retaining walls. Does that count? I did all the manual labor on my own house, all the carpentry, all the assembly and all that. I mean, guess it's work. I didn't get paid, but I saved money not having other people do it. Hell, you rely on South Dakota contractors to do it. The, you, your, your house will fall apart. Furniture would be missing a leg. <clears throat> you know, and if and if this goes away, you know what? Cappy's going to go work real job. Hell, I'm thinking about becoming a cop just because I'm bored. Not with this. It's just you can't do it all the time. Your voice won't, won't uh, hold out. Me, Mike, $2. Conquer brass pull. Now purr like a naughty cat. Laughing. <laughs> I'll tell. Okay. I'll be further honest. Women on the strip pole. That's more of a job than this. Because they're out there in the public. They got to deal with all the people in the public. They got to work. There's some exercise involved. They got to show up on time. There's some safety risk. That's a real job. That's a real job. I'll grant you that. I'm st I don't even get on my pajamas half the time. I don't have a commute. Wiz Division Productions, five bucks. Making money off social media is their birthright, just like the college experience. You're killing their dreams and passions. Let them, dude, bro, bro. That's fine. They could go ahead and look. Here, here's the truth, though. Um, and it's kind of optimistic. I think as more and more is automated in the economy and we become a more high, higher standard of living, and our labor is kind of either outsourced to robots or machines or to the Chinese. What are you going to do? And I think content creation, all the different people with all their different unique podcasts and unique things. And, and you know, like the guy with the uh, industrial press, will it will it press? You know, we, we got all this great. It's a it's a new renaissance of, of creativity. I wouldn't call it art, but creativity and, and content. And there is actually, I've said it before, out of the 8 billion people in the world, a couple thousand are really going to like your personality. They're going to think you're the greatest thing ever. Everybody has like, everybody has a, a at least a congregation of a thousand people out there. I think you're the cat's meow. So there's nothing wrong if you want to go out there and do the, the Bob Bobson show. <clears throat> and you're talking about your styrofoam collection. There's going to be a thousand people out there that are going to be fascinated with styrofoam. 
and they're going to love your, your, your diction and your delivery. And go do it. But until that time, one, one, and, and don't dare think, oh, the Styrofoam podcast, podcast with Bob Bobson. They're like, I'm pretty serious. That's when they start interviewing each other. You know, they're like, well, what are you? Oh, it's pretty serious. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. And this thing happened. It was very, oh, my God. Well, well who do you think? It's like, I, I wake up and I, I th throw the thing on and then people show up. And I'm, I'm, again, as confused as anyone else. <clears throat> so go ahead and do it. But, yeah, it's uh, uh, Athema Deku with five bucks. Kindergarten teacher asked us what you want to be when you grow up. I said Hitman with 100% certainty. <laughs> I. That's what I want to do now. At the time, I didn't understand why she was horrified. Dude, you were the regular Calvin. You're the Mexican Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes. Got Mrs. Wormwood there. Uh, you see, like Atham, he, he's going to be a chemical engineer. That's way more of an achievement than I bought a, a $200 mic and a setup with a $150 camera, and I got internet access. It's Oh, scrolling the blue wrench. Oh, the blue wrench is live right now on his channel. Oh, how about this? After this, I'll, I'll end. You guys go tune in to Doc. And if you haven't subscribed to Doc, subscribe to Doc. But not first without subscribing to me. 96,100 subscribers we're at now. <clears throat> 3,900 more to go. Talking about how awesome his pal Cappy is. I am pretty awesome, man. I'm pretty awesome. BFCZ8 nap ten dollars. I once knew a Gen X lady from Connecticut that cheated on and divorced her Wall Street street her husband, then went to get a master's in counseling and become a life coach. Right, right. Why would you listen? Look, therapists are already pretty bad pool to be fishing from. All right, but life coaches they couldn't even go to like through the proper channels to get a, a master's degree. <clears throat> and I haven't either, but I don't, I don't claim to have the solution. I just, I just tell you not to do stupid things. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Ro Ray John, five Canadian bucks. Track con say marriages were perfect back then because it was hard to get a, a divorce back then. Today it's much easier. I don't know if they're saying it was perfect back then, but they said, I think people would say things were easier back then, marriage included. Uh, I think that's more because, uh, for better or worse, the social conditioning was that the women would follow, the men would lead. And it has nothing to do with leading and men and women being subservient. Ballroom dance instructor, I know you can only have one leader and you can only have one follower. It's even better that if, okay, you got two people, it's better to have the woman lead and the guy follow than have two leaders or two followers, especially two leaders. <clears throat> um. So I would say women were more conditioned back then to follow. Well, Father Knows Best, you know, the TV show. I should probably watch that just to like, like, oh, was it kind of like that? Was it like any, I wonder, was it like Andy Griffith? Were things like that back in the day? Brian Zylo, another $10. Aaron, how come there's a lot of ugly women, not just in attitude, <clears throat> but in beauty? I, 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 I'm I, surprised you don't know this. And I'm being serious. Brian, women don't like men that much now. And I don't think they like men that much in the past. They don't hate men. I, I keep qualifying that they like men, but nowhere near enough to stay in physical shape. Their interest in you is nowhere near what men's interest in women are certainly not physically. And, and what I like to do, what economists or empiricists like to do is say, all right, forget all the words, remove all the words. What are people doing? You're doing that. All right. You chose A over B. You value A more than B. And women and men, men are, they've done this too, although men may do a cost benefit analysis. <clears throat> uh, women have chosen food over men, unhealthy food. I mean, we all have to have food, but excessive food. That's why 70% of women are overweight. If men were serious about getting girls, 70% of them would not be overweight. But I think men are looking at that like, man, we're the ones that have to pursue, like, man, the pursuit costs are just not there. And so they kind of throw in the towel. Uh, women, and, and since women just don't have as much interest in men as men do women, when given the choice, the majority of them, 70%, would prefer food over sex or love or intimacy or romance or companionship or, or stuff like that. <clears throat> Doesn't mean they don't want it. Doesn't mean they don't cry over it at night. 
But when it comes when it comes to the rubber hitting the road, th their choice is to consume food or not. Forget. Let's remove food. Let's talk about a tire. It, women don't want to spend the five, 10, 15 minutes to put together a dress. Um, I know this one gal, it, it's rare. Uh, it's in Rapid City, but she always dresses up. It's kind of shocking, actually, in a good way, in a good way. And I always compliment how nice she looked. Because she puts together an outfit. And she's not like a, a model or anything, but she puts it together. And I don't even think she does it for the guys. I think she just does it for her own sake, which is great, which is fine. Um, <clears throat> but there again, women could uh, extract or exact a certain amount of social benefits, dressing up and looking pretty, putting themselves together when they go out in public, whatever that might be. Maybe guys ask them out. Maybe they get extra drinks, whatever. There's, there's some benefits to that. But most women, especially if you go to Walmart or if you live in South Dakota, period, you'll look and say most women would rather put on the sweats, the pink shirt or the pink sweats, not do their hair, not do their face, and just go out and look like slobs, look like men. Uh, so it's, it's not, um, there's a lot of ugly women, not just in attitude, but in beauty. Well, well, yeah, but <clears throat> remove the attitude because you're focusing on beauty, right? They are choosing not to be beautiful because the benefits of being beautiful do not outweigh the costs and work that is required to be beautiful in their mind. They have made that calculus, whether they agree with that or not, that is the calculus they made because they acted on that. And as the choice they made. And so that's that's what it and and the ultimate reason for it. The reason you would be beautiful as a woman would be to attract a guy. And I don't know how many times you got to keep saying it. They're just not that into you guys. And so there you go. Eric Burns Marsh, five bucks. Uh, asshole consulting is not a real job. It is not. The only real work I ever did with Asshole Consulting was programming the website and setting up payment processing and all that and registering the LLC and perhaps the taxes I got to do with it. So, again, this back office stuff that you really don't see. Um, but, you know, you know, Bob from Tallahassee writes, my wife is going to hang out with Kevin in sales and she assures me it's nothing bad. What should I do? You know, that's the easy part. Uh, thank God. Real jobs include long commutes, psycho coworkers, abusive bosses, and diversity struggle sessions. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Not to mention work too. Brian Zylo, 10 to, geez, Brian, what is it? A hundred bucks you've given me so far? 10 bucks. <clears throat> Don't listen to the haters, Aaron. They're mad because you cut your finances in half and you're enjoying the class. Oh, I'm not, I'm not mad at the haters or upset. They don't bother me. I just looked at it. I'm like, come on, man. Really? Really? Now, a lot of them, admittedly, um, it's a Gundam was pulling out the, the the crazy obscure ones. You know, and you got these gals like talking about how, oh, what was it? E everything is is ism or ist. And you're looking at this girl. It's like, okay, all right. You went to college. You got out of college. You can't find a job. And now you're doing this. All right. You're just repeating what your professors told you. I, I don't really get mad. I just like annoyed, perturbed, kind of shaking my head. But then I'm happy because I know that person has a miserable life. <clears throat> but uh, it, it's kind of like when people graduate with a liberal arts degree or they think they become a teacher. I'm a teacher. I'm like, okay, you never left school. It's not impressive. I have a degree in journalism. I'm just not impressive. I have a degree in the liberal arts. I have a degree in theater. I have like, okay, you, you were in adult daycare. For four years, five or six, depending on how long it took or how advanced the degree, you guys, just not that oppressive. And then they like, hey, hey, hey. you know, it's the, the thing they're most proud of. I'll, I'll tell you this, the people who are in there, podcast creators, content creators, all that other influencers, at least they're making money. That's better than any liberal arts degree. So it is better than that. They have a, a little bit of uh, reason to be proud. I don't know if I derive my point, purpose and meaning and value in life. Yes, Aaron, what do you do that's good? I'm a good uncle. I raise my nieces right. <clears throat> or influence. I don't get to raise them, obviously. Ooh, 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 way too much responsibility. Zeranx, 10 bucks. Cappy's made his money. <clears throat> and those of us who believed 
but didn't make it like he did or obviously not working hard enough. Enjoy your infinity pool, Aaron Clary Olstein. <laughs> Laugh out loud, sir. I didn't make that much money. I still don't make that much money. I, I mean, I'd love to have PewDiePie money, but I don't. I make enough. I I keep telling you this. Spend less than you make. You can see my cars. They're all old. I think the newest car I own is eight years old. Eight years old. I got it in Vegas. Um, I just spent less than I made, and I got free time, man. That's what I got. It's wonderful. I, You don't control how much money you make totally. You do control how much you spend. And that's how I got here, because I valued freedom more than I did money and things. You guys can join me in the infinity pool. Crypto pimp, 10 bucks. Thanks for the great content. No, no problem, crypto pimp. No problem. <clears throat> I'm glad you guys, I like to think we learn a little bit here. Hey, let's learn from the old Gen Xers mistakes. Let's go watch it get pissed off. Yep, Lycus was, Lycus was light years ahead of his, of our time. Yep. He's still out there, man. Tune in to Tom Lycus. <sighs> Mac and Liberty, yes, correct. I don't like influencer. I do not like life coach. Uh, BFC, two bucks. Is there going to be a 100,000 case celebration? I, I don't know. You guys want one? Um, I'll probably be in Vegas maybe when that happens. Dog of no real value will make a return. She'll have a celebrity guest appearance on the show. Uh, I think I'm, we're going to auction off the Carlson School of Management degree. We'll auction off my college degree. I don't know what what is it's not that's not that big of an accomplishment either though I mean there's a lot of people got a hundred thousand now again it really is just to get the plastic thing so I could show my dad hey look at this show my mom look at that what is that, what is that? it's it's my play button got a hundred thousand oh that's nice you know mom mom would be mom dad what the hell. <laughs> Uh, me, Mike, five bucks. Uh, Tango from Argentina used to be known for precision and gender specific polarity. It was also, let me one up you there, me, Mike. It was a way to negotiate prostitution prices. That's what it was in Argentina. But heard they came out with this improved version where they now lead the woman. Huh? <clears throat> well, there's American tango in Argentine, uh, but the men lead in both. Now, they, if they came out with a new and improved version where the man ain't leading, I don't know how the woman's holding herself up because without a man, you women will fall in tango. You are never on your own balance or rarely on your own balance in tango. You're doing the basic, you're on it, but you, without the man, you're, you're, you're on the ground. That is sad. Like that's gonna go away. There's gonna there's gonna be no ballroom dancing because women just aren't gonna follow. And you're not gonna wear dresses. That's the other thing. Men usually wear traditionally black suits or uh, tuxedos, and women wear wonderful, colorful dresses. Fine, don't do dancing. Hand clogs two bucks. Let's go on a hike. Hail Lord, me Mike. Me Mike, are you in Vegas? Uh, justified misogyny. <laughs> Two bucks. What's the ROI for escort versus dating for the? Oh God, really, really justified? Have you not read this book? I'd I'd have to look it up. But it, who knows? It depends on what the rate is and what you want. But there's multiple variables. It, it's not even close. It, it's two orders of magnitude different. Dating? Look, you're gonna spend two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars cash. I'm pursuing women, all right? That's that's the average guy, cash, over your life, cash. Uh, your average escort, and, and I mean, how many times do you get laid? <clears throat> uh, let's do an average, so 265,000. Let's say you get a $500. That, that'll get you a good one, right? I think we're all in agreement on that. 530. Divided by a 50 year, that's 10 times a year, 11 times a year, once a month, basically. Different girl. You tell me if it's cheaper. 
And that's no divorce or anything else. That that is without a doubt. That's a slam dunk. Um, you know, people are like, oh, 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 you pay for it. One, you all pay for it. No matter what, you all pay for it. <clears throat> and two, it is it is so much drastically cheaper uh, that I, as again, the economist, I have I can't. I want well, a libertarian. I have no moral qualms with it. Two, as an economist, I, obviously it's a, a better deal. And three, you're going to pay for it anyway. And no, I'm not wrong. And no, you can't convince me otherwise. You got to prove to me somehow that the, that barter is not the same as cash. Somehow it's beautiful. If if you buy me a bunch of crap, it's romantic and love. But if you give me cash, you're a dirty whore. Or no, you're a dirty John and she's a dirty whore. Wedding rings? Good. $4,000 cash? No. Lawn dart, five bucks. Have you read or heard David Graeber's BS Jobs? He is a leftist, but it is an interesting book. Um, No, I I really don't read books unless I'm paid or I have a very keen interest in it. It's very rarely do I have a keen interest. I wouldn't doubt that. Um, sounds like a good, good premise to a book like jobs that are BS. Like what percent? I mean, we're talking white collar jobs, I'd imagine, too. Does he go? Does he claim that diversity and inclusion in HR are all BS jobs, or is he politically aligned with that? I'd say at least seventy percent of your white collar jobs are are pointless. Did you know, man? Two Canadian bucks. My date asked why girls wear track pants in public. Right. <sighs> Here we go. <clears throat> Moon pilled rational optics, two bucks. The book of numbers in Bachelor Pad Economics are on the menu. They have, they are, they always are. Amazon.com, buy those books. Uh, are we that? Are we that? We're caught up. We're all caught up. All right, there you go. So that's it. Now I now I feel like I have some ex I, I did something tonight. Now I could go to bed early. Now I could take it's nine o'clock. Now I could take my sleeping pills and go to bed. I'm not kidding. I was about to fall asleep at like Seven. <clears throat> All right. uh, oh, wait, Brian Zylo again, $20. Brian, you don't have to. That's good enough, man. Say, help out here. Brian, don't donate me any more money. Donate to Thor and Missy. Search up GoFundMe, Thor and Missy. She needs your medical. They, need, they have huge medical expenses because Missy got in a horrific accident. Help them out. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Brian, 20 bucks. Aaron, because of you, if a woman is not 90 to 20 or 21, Maybe I don't pay for the date because of you if a woman is not 19. Well, I I don't know if I would pay for a date, first date anyway. Um, If you're serious about dating, your first dates are coffee, hiking, go for a run, meet for a drink or something like that. Uh, you, just, you just don't, not with rents being what they are, not with tuition being what it is, no. Um, to, to just don't pay for your first couple dates. You got to prove it. You got to make sure you, you got to like the girl too. Drew Carlstrom, 2.79 Canadian, uh, Canadian docs, uh, dollars. Love the content. Thank for your perspective. Thanks, Drew. Eric Burns, Marsh, five bucks. Planning to do recon in Idaho. Any suggestions be, besides Boise and uh, Coeur d'Alene? Um, <clears throat> I would avoid Boise. It's just boring. There's nothing to do in Boise. It's not even that pretty. I would go into the Panhandle, Moscow, um, Coeur d'Alene, Bonners Ferry, all the way up into the Canadian Rockies. I mean, if you got time, I go into the Canadian Rockies. That's what I would do as well. Castlegar, maybe if you can make your way all the way up to Revelstoke, maybe even Banff, uh, that's what I would do. But no, that southern part of Idaho is just kind of bleh. Um, if if you're going to Boise, you're going to be that area. You might as well go over Grand Teton's Yellowstone, uh, which is Wyoming. Bring a gun, and don't look at their women. <clears throat> you're looking at our women folk for. I'm looking at them because they're so freaking hideous. I can't believe you have sex with that. That's why I'm looking at your women or women folk. Didn't know if it was your cattle or your wife. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so I'd, I'd skip Boise. 
nothing, nothing really. I mean, it's not a bad town, but it, uh, now, wait, are you going? Do don't do it now. It's cold. Don't don't go now. Those passes are filled with snow. Uh, me, Mike, two bucks. Coffee date, boys. Arrive early. She pays hers. Laugh at, I. It's true. I. You know, just listen to Elkin's problems with the online dating and all that. You know, it's uh, it's like no, nah, we'll meet for coffee, and I want to. And I even told him, do a Zoom, do a Skype. Because coffee's going to be an hour of your time getting there and back. And a lot of these gals, they got fake profiles. And i like, no, I want to do a Zoom. I want to see that you're who you indeed are. <clears throat> and pay very close attention to the background. Like, are there clothes strewn all around? Is she a dirty, unkept woman? Unkempt? Or is it unkept? Unkempt? Is, is she uh, she cluttery? She uh, she uh, not clean? Not in a biblical sense. I mean, just it, it, she live in a sty. That's all I want to know. I think we're good. Uh, 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 uh. All right, that's it. Uh, we'll see you guys later, Toodles.